It's my pleasure to be here today. More and more people are leaving the countryside and moving into the urban areas. We can see this expansion in cities around the world. Urban areas are growing larger, they're becoming more densely populated, and they're generating additional heat. Here's a report from the United Nations stating that 68% of the world population is projected to live in urban areas. Let's take a look at the city of Chicago. I have it displayed here with the National Land Cover Database that's hosted as a time series in Living Atlas. I've symbolized it to only render the forest and developed land classifications. We can see the effects of urbanization and the lack of vegetation on the landscape, especially if we get in a little closer. Here, the urban core is completely devoid of any forested areas. It leads us to wonder, what is the, impact of this, what is the scale of this impact on temperature, and what can be done about it? Because this isn't just an issue for the city of Chicago alone. Let's look at it this way. Here, I have one summer of daily land surface temperature measurements from NASA's MODIS satellite sensor. I was able to run the aggregate multidimensional raster tool to calculate the mean for each pixel. Now, this map doesn't look surprising. It has both latitudinal and elevation gradients of temperature. But if we turn on the World Cities layer from Living Atlas, a little more context is revealed. Showing up like little hot spots are the thermal signatures of urban centers throughout the region. These are urban heat islands where the city is needlessly warmer than that of the surrounding area. You can clearly see that here if we zoom in in the cities of Toulouse, Lyon, Dijon, Orleans, and of course in Paris. Combined with climate change, the effects of urban heat islands is only getting worse causing increased energy consumption, elevated emissions of air pollutants and greenhouse gases, and compromised human health and comfort. However, this is relatively coarse one-kilometer resolution data. How can we get a little bit more detail for use in mitigation and urban planning? Luckily, part of Living Atlas is access to the vast archives of Landsat satellite imagery, and this can be added into your map and used in your analysis quite simply. Please, let me share with you how to do this. Navigate to the portal, type in multispectral Landsat, and bring this into your map. The Landsat imagery comes in with two of the thermal bands that can be now used for block-level heat mapping. Let's see how this can be done, and we'll even use redlands in the surrounding area as an example. We can see here that the multidimensional Landsat imagery comes in with two, excuse me, comes into our map with the natural agriculture representation of Earth. However, if I come in here to properties, I can choose any of the other processing templates for other single bands, combinations, or raster functions that have been built in with the service. I'm going to choose band 10 in degrees Fahrenheit. However, to save some time, I've already pre-configured band 10 and 11 here. What I did was duplicate the Landsat layer and then apply each of the processing templates I needed, so I have those as two separate layers. I've also applied a definition query to each of these to help select better quality days that are recent and without cloud cover. Now, take a look here at the time slider you can set the date for your analysis. I've sent, I will set mine to be July 1st of 2019. That way, it's right in the summertime. Now, let's take these two thermal bands and use these in a raster function, which is an on-the-fly calculation applied to our layers. To start, I'll go here to the analysis tool and open up the raster functions. If you haven't used raster functions before, they're really easy to use, and you can string them together like you would a task, excuse me, a tool in Model Builder. Let's browse some of these because there are so many different ways that you can apply these to your raster data sets. For example, these top ones are pre-configured calculations that are ready to go and are commonly used in raster analysis and visualization. We have other raster functions that can classify or modify the appearance of your raster 
or be used to perform more in-depth calculations and statistical op operations. So how are we going to use these raster functions to come up with an analysis of urban heat islands? Well, the way this methodology works is it compares the thermal measurements of each pixel from Landsat to that average of the surrounding area. This will allow us to identify areas that are warmer than what we might expect. To make these calculations, we will be using a combination of several raster functions, including band arithmetic and focal statistics. Let's start creating our function chain. Open up the function editor and begin by searching for the plus function. I can drag that into my function editor, and I'll add in band 10 and band 11 and make my first connections. Next, I will divide the results by two. Search for divide and bring this into the editor window. I'll connect the output of plus to divide and bring in my constant. I'll type in two and make that connection. The output of this chain so far is the average of band 10 and 11. I mentioned earlier that we were going to compare each pixel to the neighborhood average. And to get that, I will use a tool called Focal Statistics. I'll search for Focal Statistics and bring this in, and I'll connect the output of divide to that. I'll double-click it and open it to set the neighborhood of the statistics to be performed. The neighborhood is rectangle. The width and the height will both be 166 pixels. The statistics type is mean, so I'll get the mean temperature for each cell based on the values within a bounding box. Keep in mind that each pixel is 30 meters by 30 meters, so we're generating a focal neighborhood of about five kilometers. Now that we have that, we'll bring in the minus function. This is subtracting the results of the focal statistics from the original average. I'll double-click it to open it up. Ensure that the cell size is set to max of and the extent type is intersection of. I'll click the output of the focal statistics to the bottom raster and the output of divide to the top raster. The last step is to add in the function of stretch, which is setting the range of data that we are going to map and provides the proper contrast on the final raster output. I'll open this up. The type will be minimum and maximum, the output minimum will be negative 20 degrees, and the output maximum is 20 degrees. Make sure to check the box for estimate statistics. I'll connect minus to that, and now that we have our completed raster function, I like to auto layout to make it nice and neat. The next step, now that this is configured, is to save this raster function template which can be used on any project or shared with my colleagues. I'll give it a name. It's really important to add some detail about your raster function template, especially if this is going to be shared around your organization and beyond. Now that that's saved, I'll close my editor, and I'll come here and see it here under Custom. Let's run this raster function template by opening it up and selecting it. While that's running, let's go back to the city of Redlands and orient ourselves to be able to understand our results. This is the downtown area here. South of downtown is some of the residential areas. Here we are on the Redlands Esri campus. Many of us are staying in hotels right along this area. And this area up in the north is an area of rapid growth and development. All right, we have the output of our raster function here. Now it's time to apply a meaningful color ramp. We'll come to our symbology. I'm going to choose red for hot areas and blue for cooler areas. In this example from Redlands, we can see a distinct cooler signature here around the Esri campus, thanks to Jack's love of trees. Further north, in this area here, hosting businesses like Amazon, we see these intense heat islands. Information like this that we can extract from Landsat can help promote smart planning policies and decision-making for cities and communities like Redlands that continue to grow 
but not at the cost of human health and the environment. Let's take a look at another city, the city of Richmond, Virginia. I applied the same raster function template on the area around the city and came up with these results. And actually, the city of Richmond has already been using GIS to map their urban heat islands because of that direct correlation between urban heat and human health. The information they calculated in GIS is already being used to inform their citywide master plan. Let's take a look at their website here. They have an article titled, Where Do We Need Shade? One takeaway from this article is that from their GIS analysis, they found differences of up to 16 degrees Fahrenheit across Richmond's neighborhoods during the hottest parts of the day. That means when a heavily shaded neighborhood in Richmond has an afternoon temperature of 87 degrees, it could be 103 in a more urbanized neighborhood in the same city. With more people moving into cities, and with hotter summers forecasted, the effect of urban heat islands will be of growing concern worldwide. With this workflow, you can run the same analysis for your own community using the readily accessible Landsat imagery from ArcGIS Living Atlas of the World. Thank you. Thank you.